Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the Bendy and the Dark Revival gameplay trailer with a detailed breakdown and a look into some possible theories as to who the female character we seem to be playing as may be. There are many possibilities in terms of where this new story may go, so think of this video as more of a collection of theory ideas rather than anything too in-depth. The way I wish to structure this video is to look through the trailer section by section and comment on what we're seeing as we move through frame by frame. This will include both a look at the updated visuals, new gameplay mechanics, and of course theories that may explain what exactly is going on here. So let us begin with that mysterious voice right at the start of this trailer. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be wandering around all by yourself. This voice sounds exactly the same as the one we previously heard in the Unknown audio log released a few months ago. How very interesting. Such knowledge. As you may remember, we came to two conclusions as to who this voice may be. Either A, a brand new character, or B, the resurrected Sammy Lawrence. Recently, The Meatly, one of Bendy's creators, tweeted out the following. That's not Henry, it sounds like someone new. Now, this suggests that the voice belongs to a brand new character, although this tweet may also refer to the main focus of this trailer, the female protagonist. I do find it slightly strange if this is the case though, as obviously the female character wouldn't be Henry. However, this mysterious male voice doesn't sound like him either, so who knows. Here, it also sounds a lot less like Sammy Lawrence than in previous trailers too, although Sammy's voice did change when he was reborn once before. I will finally be freed from this prison, this inky, dark abyss. You said I'd be free. Well, I'm going to free you now. And it still has similarities, so perhaps this is Sammy we hear after all, once again spying on the female character in this trailer as she makes her way through the halls of this rundown studio. What he says is also interesting. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be wandering around all by yourself. This suggests the female character in this trailer is indeed both young and attractive. It also suggests the male character has some kind of dialogue or interaction with her and potentially is the person to give her the gent pipe pictured here. Perhaps we help this male character gain knowledge for unknown purposes in return for his help for us navigating the studio. I won't go too in depth yet, but these are my early thoughts on who this character may be and what his purpose in the game is. I'm sure he's up to no good and is not as well intentioned as he wishes to portray himself, especially if this is Sammy Lawrence after all. As we begin the gameplay segment of this trailer, we see that visually the game has had a substantial upgrade over the original Bendy and the Ink Machine. The signature art style is back, however we now have a softer, more filmic look to the visuals, with hazy natural lighting, making things seem far creepier than ever before. Also notice how worn down everything looks around us. The poster to the left looks as though Beast Bendy has slashed it with his claws. Perhaps the torn environment is indeed the result of the Ink Demon. As our character raises up her hand, we can see that they partially look human, and partially they are made up of ink. One hand is also much pointier than the other and resembles that of Alice Angels. It appears whoever this character may be, they are indeed transforming into a variation of the Alice Angel template. We have so far seen two Alices before, so is this a third? And how many are there? Perhaps this is another Boris clone situation. Let's take a listen to what this character has to say. What? This feels wrong. So, what exactly feels wrong? Well, my initial thought was that this was perhaps Susie Campbell or Alison Pendle and her transformation into Alice. While her voice doesn't sound like an exact match for Susie's high-pitched tone, it does sound similar to Alison. It also sounds similar to Susie during certain moments of reflection in Chapter 3. Check out these clips paired beside the trailer audio. I will not let the demon touch me again. This feels wrong. 
If it is Susie for example then the entire trailer fits together nicely. Susie is confused as she awakes in a strange cartoon replica of the old studio, inhabited by dangerous ink creatures. Instead of being reborn as a perfect version of Alice like Joey promised her, she awakes as this hybrid, half human, half monster. Now afraid, she attempts to escape this place, eventually realising she can absorb the hearts of the Butcher Gang members and other creatures in order to become more like the cartoon character she desires. Watch her hand at the end of a trailer after she absorbs Piper, and contrast that with her palm at the beginning, it becomes more inky. It seems this could be Susie's dark revival, a once innocent and naive performer who dreamt of living through the character she loved to play, Alice Angel, but eventually fell victim to Joey Drew and then slowly consumed those around her in a pursuit to become perfect, growing ever more twisted and cruel as she did. A dark revival indeed. However, if the tweet from the Meatly was directed at this character then, it can't be Susie. While this theory fits with what we see both presented in the trailer and the title of the new game, let's switch it up with a second possibility, that this character is someone who we haven't seen before at all. The first candidate would be the one that everyone is shouting about, Linda. This is certainly a possibility, although technically she is not a new character. We have heard of her before, as she was discussed by both Henry in his audio log and during the marketing of Bendy Chapter 5 on the Joey Drew Studios YouTube channel. Still, let's humour the notion. Linda is spoken of by Henry very fondly, and it seems like she was his girlfriend or wife. If this is the case, then it would explain why the little girl at the end of Bendy and the Ink Machine refers to Joey Drew as Uncle Joey. Tell me another one, Uncle Joey. This may be Henry's daughter, who visited her Uncle Joey's home when Linda came looking for Henry, who had mysteriously disappeared after receiving a vague letter from his old work partner. If Linda and her child were at Joey Drew's house, then they may have fallen prey to his inky experiments themselves, becoming trapped inside the machine and had a dark revival inside this cartoon world. Again, this would explain the game's subtitle, and if this character is Linda, it explains why she is so confused in her new body and afraid of a location she wakes inside. One minute she is at Joey Drew's apartment, and the next she's running around a cartoon studio with an inky body. If this theory is correct, it means Joey trapped Linda's soul inside the ink machine as a way of clearing up the last people connecting him with Henry's disappearance. He could finally remove himself from any kind of investigation and bury all that incriminating evidence against him. While the hands of this woman do look like they may belong to someone older, the voice itself sounds like it belongs to someone youthful. So it's hard to know if this is Linda, but if it is, maybe she will reunite with Henry inside the machine and together they will figure out a way to escape. Of course this does seem unlikely as the game was stated not to be a sequel. The final possibility which I will briefly touch on is that this is a completely new character, perhaps a character from the upcoming Bendy novel, Dreams Come to Life, who goes by the name of Dot. Dot is, according to the book description, a writing intern at Joey Drew Studios who befriends the main protagonist and goes on an adventure with him to uncover Joey Drew's sinister secrets, i.e. the ink machine and its creepy experiments. Could then the game carry on from where the book ends? It is possible Dot does not survive at the end of this book and ends up as Joey's latest experiment herself, reborn from the ink as an Alice clone. It would certainly be a neat way to tie two forms of media together, read through the book and get to know a new character before continuing their story in playable form in the new game. Again, it would be Dot's Dark Revival, so it makes sense in terms of the title. Curiouser still, Dreams Come to Life launches in September, and with this game scheduled for a full release, it seems like a tie-in may be on the cards. But now we've touched on a few theories, let's walk through the rest of the trailer. Notice the new weapon or tool on display here. It looks like a gent pipe, but with a lightning conductor on top where the hole in the pipe should be. Electricity emanates from this rod, and we discover later on it even powers up electronic locks to open doors. So this new tool seems to be useful for more than simply zapping enemies. This suggests that the gent pipe Henry uses during Bendy and the Ink Machine is a pipe without any attachments added on. 
The true use of these gent pipes seems to be to modify and upgrade them with extra parts. Kind of like a workman's tool, each part having a separate use or function. Where would we fit these upgrades? Well, in the next shot we see a workbench with lots of tools and a light to work under. A gent pipe also sits here. This suggests that these gent stations will be used to upgrade and fit new gear onto our gent pipe. Gear like this electric zapper. An interesting gameplay system which reminds me of the upgrade benches in games such as The Last of Us. Next, we pass a searcher who leaps into action. The lighting here is fantastic, as we see this searcher cast shadows dynamically on the walls. The searcher also appears right at the end of the trailer, and here we can really appreciate its upgraded character model. Strings of ink ooze from its arms, and the body looks far inkier and more rich in detail than ever before. It now really looks like a skeletal human is trapped within, attempting to pounce up from the floorboards. As our character bolts for the door, we get a good look at how this new tool works. As stated before, it powers up the electrical lockbox, allowing for the inner mechanism to engage and open up the door. This is far more involved than the simple pull a switch mechanic of the original game. It also takes much longer. Just imagine waiting for this thing to open with an angry ink demon on your tail. The final section of the trailer contains two significant points of interest. The first is the writing on the wall which reads, The machine must endure. This suggests the characters in the Dark Revival do not wish the machine to be tampered with. Perhaps because they realise the loops occur after Henry enters the giant ink machine at the heart of the studio and plays the final reel, or maybe it's simply because they feel the ink machine is the one thing holding everything in this world together. However, if this new character can find a way to shut the machine down, then it may actually free the souls of those within. This brings into play the second point. This mystery character touches the Butcher Gang member, disintegrating them into a mass of light. Let's take a second to appreciate both the vastly superior new model and animation on display here versus the old Piper design. The face is now fully modelled instead of being a flat texture, and this allows for us to see every gory bump and nook. We can even see the shriveled eyelids here beneath the stitching, and the nostrils and teeth are also modelled in full 3D. This really brings the character to life, and makes it look genuinely creepy to behold. It seems as though by touching the enemy here, they freeze and then disappear as they vaporise into a cluster of light shards. Are we playing as a female ink demon here then? A version of Alice who is truly benevolent and somehow possesses the ability to free those trapped within the ink using our angelic hands. One of the first teaser slogans for this new Bendy game was Benevolent Demon, Someone Has Reawakened the Dark. However, as we all know, Bendy vanquishes anything living in sight, turning them back to ink and sending them to the screaming well of voices to be reborn once again. This new angel seems to be the perfect creation Susie longed to be, another ruling against our Susie theory. Essentially, this scenario would mean we play as the saviour from the prophecy who will set everyone free. Henry never was that person after all. However, the one curious point here is that the hand is inkier after touching the Butcher Gang member, meaning that perhaps by freeing souls from the bodies of our enemies, this in turn transforms our character into more of an ink creature, consumed by the ink she frees. Either way, we'll get more information about how we are to break the cycle in a few months' time, as the Dark Revival is scheduled for a full release. I assume this cycle refers to the infinite loop Henry encountered during his journey through the studio. With that said, this final thought brings us to the end of today's video. And I just wanted to say one final thing guys at the end of this video that obviously the theories I have covered in this video are very basic, very light because we had so much ground to cover. I will probably be diving into some more in-depth theory videos over the coming weeks and months in the lead up to this new game. But for now this is just kind of touching base and giving you guys a little sort of sneak peek into what I'm thinking and what some of the community has thought around this new trailer. Sort of delving into some ideas and just having a fun video where we explore the basis of this trailer so if you have enjoyed this video guys remember to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys on my next one